oh, the residents, yeah, they're these guys in tuxedos and top hats and giant eyeballs, and nobody knows who they are. Oh, everybody, how you all are doing tonight? We got a nice little festival all worked up for you. We got the residents, we got other special guests on. is that they were friends since basically since childhood who always did things together and who had ideas and all, it was a thing that they they just did they were they were sort of a collective thing but but not consciously so when they got interested in doing music they started doing music together and they didn't have a name or anything and when they decided that they would become something that had a name uh, which was a sort of a sign to them by accident, they felt that the best way of thinking of themselves would be as a group instead of as these individual people. Mm. And they wanted to present themselves as a, as a group because that's the way they, that's the way they were. Yeah. And so uh, it's not that they're hiding anything so much as they don't want people focusing on individuals. They want to be recognized and seen as a group. They want to be the Beatles, not John, Paul, George, and Ringo. On the so-called theory of obscurity. The theory of obscurity proper is an artistic theory. Uh, uh, there's a system built upon this theory, the main premise of which is that um, the artist is doing what he's doing for himself and primarily and with a minimum amount of input and or feedback from the outside. Residents were even like more far out, more fantastic than Devo and... I've heard him say that, you know, there's only like, you know, four songs in the entire world anyway. Uh, they're just variations of, of those songs and that and that covers is just a more honest way of recognizing the sources of material. But um, they do covers, I think, be because they like they like the songs.
you know, some of the best songs that have been written have already been written. And to uh, feel like you're required to write something new and change this note to that note and change this to that, uh, just so you can say it's new, uh, is not necessarily necessary nor the best thing to do. Now we have the residents. During the nearly 10 years that the residents have been in existence, they have steadfastly refused to reveal their identity. This is sort of an extension of the theory of obscurity put into practical use. Uh, they have the idea that by remaining anonymous, they remain uh, less subjected to immediate feedback from other people who might, um, you know, influence what they do. In fact, they've only performed live twice in the last decade, affecting bizarre disguises. Well, the residents do enjoy having their own privacy. They don't like everybody knowing who they are. They don't like the fact that if they go to a concert or if they go to a film, people say, oh, the residents are there at that concert, just like if Mick Jagger goes to a concert or, or goes to a movie and they all go, oh, there's Mick Jagger. He must really like this band. So they don't want to necessarily be. The residents really like this band. Or the residents love that film. They like to be themselves and be able to do what they want. Today, Ralph Records recording artist, The Residents, from San Francisco, California. And would you also please welcome Homer Flynn, who is the uh, spokesman for the band and also for the Cryptic Corporation. Welcome, Homer. Hi. Hi, Chris. It's nice to have you here today. The Cryptic Corporation actually is, are the managers for The Residents. We really handle all their business affairs. When they have projects, like there's a big video project that we've been trying to get uh, financing on for some time now. And we've been handling all the details on that. Uh, we set up the tours for them. The give and take is pretty good. It's probably on our part a lot more give than take, but uh, they're very easy to get along with. I would have to describe our relationship more as babysitters than anything else. Which includes everything from dealing with lawyers, accountants, cleaning the cat box, sweeping floors, engineer equipment, things, just helping them realize uh, projects because they're not very realistic a lot of times when they undertake something. They, they have a great idea, but, you know, it's, it's a great idea for some other planet, perhaps, but on this one, it needs, uh, it needs some real people saying, well, you know, you, we can't do this, we can't do this, this is illegal, <laughs> we can't do that, this costs too much money. Uh, produce the videos for them, uh, so we generally handle, handle all their business aspects, as well as doing some projects on our own, but uh, the residents are mainly what we're concentrating on right now. Now, the residents have been recording for over 10 years now, with the first album was called Meet the Residents, is that right? Right. <laughs> And so, uh, and so it winds up getting no airplay, or, or, or there was one uh, uh, writer that referred to it as musical uh, coitus interruptus. It's like just about the time that you're sort of getting your foot tapping along with it, it stops. It's over, yeah. And the next one starts and you start getting your foot tapping along with it and then it stops. And, uh... and what do the critics have to say about the residents? I'm still wondering precisely what to make of it. It's hard to grasp what the residents are about with just one listening. Beyond mere information, it's increasingly hard to write about the residents. You can't describe the residents' music, you can only experience it. 
next we travel further back in time to the days of the residents' very beginning. Krusty Gooding is by the doctor. Cause he's been doing something he shouldn't utter. You guys are. But you guys are. Write one about hippies. Think you can write one about a stuff trigger? Think you can write one about a stuff trigger? Think you can write one about a stuff trigger? Play my guitar and sing a song. Some all seem to be wrong. Then one day I'm a street good luck. began in 1972. Their name itself is an acknowledgement of their respect for the business side of music. They sent an audition tape to Warner's Records. The tape was called the Warner Brothers album and the band was unnamed at the time. The band clearly wanted Warner's to have input. Warner's sent the tape back with a rejection note addressed to residents. And the band, respecting the corporation's showbiz savvy, decided to use the name. Perhaps you can explain another story then, Mr. Clem. I understand that the residents simply hate and abhor the Beatles. What can you say about that? Uh, Sid, that's absolutely false. The residents do not hate the Beatles. They have simply expressed an attitude which indicates boredom with the present-day rock and roll culture. And that the residents at this time were working with and highly influenced by two figures, the mysterious Ensenada and the British guitar player Snakefinger Lithman. Uh, that's right, Sid. Let's talk about Snakefinger Lithman first. Uh, Snakefinger had caught word of the residents' experimental uh, music and tape recording work they were doing at the time. Well, when I was on holiday in Austria a long time ago, I met a chap called Ensenada, who was a musicologist who was uh, taping the sounds of various birds. He had a tape of some people from California that was we found very interesting. We started talking together and a musician, sort of a career musician as it were. We started listening to the tapes and wondering why, uh, why people were still hanging on to a sort of decadent style of rock and roll music that they should have thrown over years ago as it was, it was dying. We decided we'd go and find these chaps over in California and see if they were like mine.
they know the Washington Monument is a symbol for the phallus. Send the dogs at Jesus' feet, to send the dogs at Jesus' feet, to send the dogs at Jesus' feet, to says no presence, says no presence in the future. In the future. Flitting in the slitting sea of slowness in the slips. A flitting in the slitting sea of slowness in the slips. A flitting in the slitting sea of slowness in the slips. A flitting in the slitting sea of slowness in the slips. A flitting in the slitting sea of slowness in the slips. And you've ranged musically through an incredible variety of styles. Are they just uh, relentlessly curious to explore different areas, or what's made them keep changing like that? Well, the, the residents started out with the idea of trying to make each album as different from the, the previous one as possible. And it has a lot to do with uh, just, as you say, a relentless drive towards experimentation. I mean, they really like to try different things. They don't really... Whereas it seems that most artists are not really content until they can make things sound, you know, almost like one thing comes directly after another with very little change in between, a sort of a seamless sound from album to album. The residents really like for that to change and, and continue to surprise their fans because they don't really know what they're going to do next. say that they themselves really are the marketing geniuses, although they don't really know, they come up with the ideas, they don't really have to utilize the ideas. Uh, the, the eyeballs are the perfect example. You know, that was just another disguise for them. But uh, for us, we were able to then capitalize upon that as a marketing tool and as a way of identifying the group. Well, so it's like your question is that they're hiding their identity and they, would, they don't see it that way at all. They're yeah, that's right, hippies and squirrels. The first one is almost free. And do you know why? Do you have any idea why we would have a thousand records pressed to sell for $1.99 each while losing 85 cents on each one? Well, I'll tell you why. It's so that you know our name when you freak out over this groovy out of sight disc. It's real hip too.
And yet, their process is the state of the art of today's technology. The resident's work of art is indeed the record itself, and um, the creative process is done in the studio. The main instruments used are, in fact, the studio and its various components. Well, we were friends with the residents for quite a while, and uh, they needed someone to take care of their business for them. They could easily be described as human basket cases and when it came to dealing with their business. So, uh, having been friends and seeing this need that they had, we uh, got involved with them in 1976 to uh, help them out in that way. The job of the residents is, is basically ideas. They're, they're, uh, it's not that they're necessarily skilled at anything, but they have lots of ideas, and so the problem is, is the realization of the idea. for a long time have been able to uh, say whatever they wanted to without any regard for judgment or maturity or the wisdom of it. And no one yet has challenged them to any tremendous degree where it might count. All right then, perhaps you can explain to me why the rumor is currently running rampant through Australia that the Beatles are in fact the residents. Uh, such a rumor exists, Sid, because Ram Magazine in Australia published a story uh, supporting the argument that the residents are in fact the Beatles. But this is of course untrue. It's absolutely untrue, Sid. But then maybe it explains why the residents have released their new single with a Beatles song right on it. Well, it may or may not explain that, Sid. It just so happens, though, the residents did record Flying, a Beatles tune from the Magical Mystery Tour album. be more interested to know, however, that the Beatles themselves perform a resident song on the flip side of this very same record. Aha! It must have been really tough to get those lads back in the studio again. Uh, tough it was, Sid. In fact, uh, the Beatles don't even know they were there. Let us hear this controversial new single right now. And they said, uh, uh, get rid of the Beatles, ban the records, uh, let's burn them or do something with them. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beatle boycott is still in effect. We haven't forgotten what the Beatles said.